Thank you so much for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, to briefly introduce myself, um, I have been working uh, as a PhD student at Mitsudin University since 2012. At the moment, I'm a postdoc candidate at the Vecian Research Center. Uh, in this seminar, uh, what I'm going to present you is a subject that we've been working on in, uh, during the last three years, and uh, which is fabrication of cellulose-based hybrid material, which is functionalized by uh, copper and copper oxide nanoparticles. Few words about cellulose. As you all know, uh, cellulose is known as an inexpensive and green material, which provides good mechanical properties and good chemical resistivity in wide range of solvents. In our research group, we developed uh, an effective and green method to dissolve wooden-based cellulose, uh, which gives us the opportunity to uh, produce a variety of cellulosic material, for instance, transparent cellulose films and also three-dimensional cellulose gels, uh, which can be uh, turned out to hydrogel and aerogel. On the other hand, methyl particles in nanometer size range often show interesting physical and chemical properties, which sometimes differ from their bulk properties. The main feature of uh, particles in nanometer size range um, is their high surface area. Here is an example that shows the differences of the surface area. If we just imagine a bulk material, uh, one centimeter cube bulk material, uh, the total surface area would be six square centimeter. Uh, but if we break down this structure to one nanometer cubes, the total surface area would be 10 million times higher. Also, interesting physical and chemical properties of metallic nanoparticles, I would say, they are mainly dependent on what type of material that we have, we are using, uh, chemical composition, and also, of course, the size and the morphology uh, and the shape of the nanoparticles. And of course, if there is any surface modification on the nanoparticles, uh, we will have the additional properties accordingly. Nanoparticles, they are hard to control. To make them usable, recyclable, and cost-effective, they often need to be incorporated into a support material, which we used in our study is uh, cellulose as a support material which provides a good uh, properties for us and is a green and also inexpensive material. By incorporating metal particles in, inside the cellulose matrix, metal nanoparticle cellulose hybrid material with unique electronic, catalytic, magnetic and biomedical properties can be produced. Here are some examples of our works. In our uh, group, we develop a synthetic approach to produce cellulose copper nanoparticles hybrid material. In our approach, we use cellulose solution as a source of cellulose, uh, and we mix this cellulose solution uh, into the copper solution as a source of copper. Then by adding a proper reducing agent, we can synthesize uh, copper nanoparticles, uh, which is uh, decorating the regenerated cellulose uh, regenerated cellulose inside the solution. The whole synthetic procedure is quite fast and reproducible. It can be uh, finished in less than 10 minutes. And uh, the final hybrid material can be easily separated uh, from solvent by simple vacuum filtration and can be washed and used in different uh, applications. Here is some characterization. Uh, as can be seen, uh, in a scan electron microscopy images, uh, we can see a fairly uniform dispersion of copper nanoparticles in a size range of 200 to 500 nanometer inside the cellulose matrix. As a possible application, we examine the antibacterial properties of synthesized hybrid material for both gram-negative and gram-positive bacterial strain, and we observe that in a suspension containing hybrid material, after 24 hours, almost 40% of bacterial density is decreased. 
these are based on the control link and uh, based on the uh, comparing with their control sample without any hybrid material. And in a longer time scale, we can see that we have even more reduction in uh, bacterial density in suspension. This shows that not only this hybrid material can uh, inhibit the bacterial growth in bacterial strain, but, on, uh, but also uh, it can uh, kill the bacteria in a short time. Here are the uh, visual comparison of the presented results. <coughs> Another approach that we studied was uh, to dissolve the cellulose in a water-based solvent and then synthesizing a variety of uh, nanoparticles like copper nanoparticles, spherical copper nanoparticles, combination of copper, uh, mixture of copper, cuprous oxide nanoparticles, and also uh, cuprous oxide nanoparticles with a specific morphology which called uh, octahedral structure. And this is the semiconducting material. And by dispersing uh, these nanoparticles inside the cellulose solution, uh, by applying the right method, we can uh, produce a two-dimensional hybrid material like the films and also the hydrogel and aerogels. For instance, uh, the synthesized octahedral cuprous oxide nanoparticles, uh, in this case, is dispersed in water-based cellulose solution and then by applying, uh, by a spin coating of this suspension, uh, we uh, produce a cuprous oxide nanoparticle cellulose film through the spin coating. Here are the, some characterization by high resolution SEM and also XRD, which proves uh, the distribution of cuprous oxide nanoparticles uh, inside the cellulose matrix. And this material has a potential application as a catalysis, photocatalysis, and also gas sensor, uh, and can be used as solar cell and uh, as biomedical materials. To conclude, um, cellulose metal oxide, metal metal oxide nanoparticles hybrid material uh, is quite uh, interesting from both practical and environmental point of view, since we are using a green uh, and an expensive support material for the nanoparticles. And we can achieve the interesting uh, targeted uh, properties by using the less amount of uh, metals for that functionality that we are aiming for. And the work um, totally present the synthetic approach, present the fast and reproducible approach for the production of hybrid material. And surprisingly, uh, we observe doing in situ regeneration of cellulose in a copper solution could play an important role on controlling the size and distribution of uh, metallic nanoparticles inside the cellulose matrix, which is quite important to achieve uh, for the targeted properties. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Are there any questions for Alirisa? Uh, how, how can one regenerate the material? After you, you make, make the, the comp composite material, nanocellulose plus nanoparticles. But if you want to recycle it, uh, is there any known process? process to separate them again? Or? Uh, f first of all, I need to clarify we don't use nanocellulose here. Uh -huh, yeah, okay. yeah. What, what we don't use nanocellulose. It we dissolve cellulose? Yes, we okay. dissolve the cellulose okay. in okay. a water-based solvent and then uh, try to do the in-situ uh, synthesis of the nanoparticles. And the question regarding um, how to be recycled, the recyclable means uh, we can use the product uh, for example, if you use it as a catalyst, you need to have a support material to have those nanoparticles decorated on the cellulose, and then you can reuse it again. Okay, the, 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 this last line is stand up. You, you can control the size and or something. Yeah, when we add the cellulose solution and make it undissolved, I would say. Okay. It would be quite interesting. Thank you for your question.